And hello, dear global youth and the change maker. This is Ishita welcoming you all to the online talk show, Let's Talk, Let's Connect, presenting the third International Youth Summit, the biggest virtual summit ever. So dear audience, as we all know that tomorrow it will be the World Youth Skills Day. So our IYS 2020 team is here today to celebrate this day with all of you. And already on the screen, you can see some beautiful, gorgeous, handsome, and dashing faces. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, they are few of our core member from What's the New Zealand team here with all of you to celebrate World Youth Skills Day. Not only this, but also, we are having some surprise for all of you to share, but I'm not going to share right now. Please stay with us and enjoy the session. Gradually, we will disclose the surprise with all of you. So thank you, dear audience, for joining with us. And today, we are really pleased and honored to have the guest among us. 
So today we are having Miss Angela Pace, pa uh, Palace Carter, then Kathy Shepherd, Madeline Taylor, Mr. John Fasendia, and Ahmed Bari with all of us. <laughs> okay, so again, once again, the same. I'm not going to give the uh, introduction. I will request one by one to our guests so that they can share their brief introduction with our lovely audience. Okay, so first I will welcome Miss Angela Page. Please uh, just briefly share your uh, introduction with our audience. Well, hello everyone. I'm really excited to be here tonight in New Zealand time and today in different times all around the world. I'm a teacher and an educator from Wellington in New Zealand where at the moment it is pretty cold. Um, I'm really excited about tonight's session because there are so many people that are involved in this International Youth Summit and I have learned so much from all the sessions we've seen so far and I look forward to learning more from everyone tonight as well as sharing some ideas of my own. So thank you for coming and it's lovely to see you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Angela. So now come to oh, Ms. Pallas Carter. Okay, I'm going to request you please introduce yourself with our audience. Thank you so much, Ashita. I am Pallas Hupe Cotter, and I'm actually in New Zealand right now. However, from my accent, you might guess that I am from the United States originally. I have lived in the UK, Saudi Arabia. I was born in Turkey, so I'm officially an expat. One thing I truly believe in, though, is the power of youth and young people. And the wisdom that comes through the years is really balanced by the enthusiasm and energy of young people. So what I do is help people learn early on how to make their lives pop with passion, purpose, and personality. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pallas. Now I'll come to Kathy. Kathy Shepherd, I'm going to request you to please introduce yourself. Hello everyone. I too am speaking to you from New Zealand, from Wellington. My name is Kathy Shepard and I am the founder and CEO of BSI People Skills and BSI Teacher Skills. I am absolutely and utterly passionate about empowering people, leaders and teams. I am so excited by seeing the growth in people from learning the skills about emotional intelligence and leadership and watching people find positivity in their lives through the work that we do. So I wish all of you a really good evening tonight or morning or whatever time it is in the place that you are. And I hope that what yeah. we talk about tonight is of huge benefit to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kathy. Okay, now I would like to invite Ms. Madeline Taylor to introduce yourself with our lovely audience. Please, Madeline. Uh, kia, ora, kia ora, everybody across the wonderful world that we live in. I too am speaking from Wellington, New Zealand. I am uh, a people skills consultant and my passion is helping you to best be. And in this time of COVID, we need to take special attention to our the extraordinary for us to be able to manage in today's world and my hope for you today is to be able to harness that amazing help you to positive and connect with your wonderful other people on this planet and can I amazing our WASDA team have done to create a network of over 75,000 people who have connected together to build hope, to build positivity, and to grow our wonderful connection across the world. So well done. It's so wonderful. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Madeline. Okay, now finally I will come to Mr. John Fresindia, CEO and President of WASDA New Zealand. So I'm going to request John, please, can you once again introduce with our audience, please? Thank you, Ashita. And yes, it's lovely that you are here joining us 
for this live session or you might be watching it as a recorded session and on um, the uh, World Youth Skills Day realizing that really your power as a young person comes through the skills that you develop and I feel very strongly that um, what we're doing here in the International Youth Summit is to support you to develop your skills. So uh, thank you for being with us. Thank you for joining us uh, in this um, special celebration because we really recognize the work that many of you have done in bringing people to the Youth Summit so that many, many people, young people particularly, can develop skills that will help you in your life now and in the future. So it's great to have you here, and it's very gr it's a wonderful thing to be supported also by this team of trainers. We've found the best trainers that we can here in New Zealand and other other countries, but uh, particularly today, we're celebrating um, our group, many uh, most of whom who have visited countries in South Asia and many other countries in the world, we want to support you and to develop your skills so that you can live the best life and contribute to our world, make our world a much better place, which is very much needed now, mm. particularly in this time of pandemic. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. Mm. Okay, now I would like to request Mr. Ahmed Bari, the Vice President of What's the New Zealand and the co-host of today's session. <laughs> I would like to request you not to introduce yourself, uh, but to okay. please highlight on today's topic. <laughs> the, uh, as okay. we are celebrating today, World <clears throat> Youth Skills uh, Day. Yeah, I think it's a thank you, Ishita, for giving us the opportunity. And I think it's a very good day to celebrate the World Youth Skills Day because uh, we have reached a uh, tremendous milestone. Uh, when we start this event, we have just only have a plan to have maybe a couple of thousand uh, people will join this event and we just share our experience and everything. But it's now a huge event. And uh, after some hiccups, we are still doing very good. And I think uh, the most important thing that we get from our um, uh, honorable uh, guest speaker here that they have really make a huge impact because I found so many positive feedback from them that this event have changed their life. Even I can see that I never have expected that we can connect with the African countries. And now we have more than uh, 25 African countries participating from more than 25 Afri African countries that are actually connected with this event or with this platform. So it's a huge uh, achievement, and um, I'm very much delighted to uh, uh, welcome all the participants who are here, and uh, they are watching us live now. Uh, but just one one single um, information or, or few information I would like to just add here, that out of um, five, one out of five youth has no education, no employment, and no training, which is really alarming. and. Out of them, out of them, uh, three are female. Uh, four out, uh, three out of four are female. So especially um, the females are really are in uh, out of education, out of employment and the training. So I'm requesting everyone to just take one simple step to just convince or motivate five of your friends to join this event. If they are not still are uh, not in our connection. You just make a commitment, okay, from today, I'm going to invite five friends to take this opportunity and just connect with this platform to learn some new ideas and uh, the opportunity to grow. So this is from my side at this moment. Ishita, thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much, Amen. Okay, so as we know that we are celebrating today uh, World Youth Skills Day. Yep. And we know that, yes, we are passing through a difficult time right now. The pandemic is going, mm -hmm. on, uh, going on throughout the world. And mm -hmm. in this situation, what 
our youth can do and how they can keep themselves progressing and we know that as because all of our guests here already had one, one uh, each impact session with our audience so already they had lots of question regarding all those issues and about their career maybe their future maybe their uh, personal professional relationship and so on so definitely we are going to focus on all those areas today and dear audience yes Today also you can ask the question in the comment box. Whatever question you want to ask regarding your development, regarding your professional development, skills development, you can ask our experts here. As you can see, like bunch of expert people on one frame today. <laughs> so start keep asking your question. So again, now I would like to uh, pass uh, Mr. John, uh, if you, uh, uh, tell about or uh, share uh, about this with our audience. Thank you. Yes. Uh, well, I'm just looking at the um, live comments and seeing and welcoming people here and uh, feel very welcomed by your comments. So it's lovely to see you signing in um, with, the, with the live comments and where you're from and many countries and um, Bangladesh in particular, uh, a lot of people, but Nepal, Sri Lanka and um, and many other countries so lovely to see you and it is a challenge uh, to um, stay in one place during this pandemic you know to live in in just one uh, room or one or two rooms where you have to stay there for for weeks on end this has never been part of your experience up until now yeah and um it is, first of all, it is so important to stay, to keep isolated, even though it is most difficult. And uh, some of you may know that in our country, we, we had very serious lockdown. And uh, because we're a smaller country, we've been able to um, uh, manage the, the uh, pandemic. But for you, wherever you are, in, in the, whichever country you're in, um, uh, uh, keeping the very simple, basic things, particularly of staying away from people, from, from crowds, washing your hands, covering over when you sneeze, maybe um, wearing a mask. These things are tremendously important. Even more important uh, is what you feel when you are staying at home, how you do feel isolated and how you feel depressed and when you get down. And here's a couple of things that uh, I would suggest, um, particularly um, I specialize in um, managing emotions and managing these difficult moments. The first thing is to manage yourself. And um, w one of the most powerful things that you can do is just even to name what you do feel. Name your feelings to yourself. Um, sometimes, actually, you, you might name them to the others in your house if they can um, bear hearing what you feel like or make contact with a friend. Um, but your feelings, uh, then they're, they're not, um, th there's nothing wrong with what you feel, but you don't have to act on it. So the first thing really is just to say, I am, I am feeling down today. And right now I'm feeling whatever it is you're feeling and rather than try to go away from the feeling thinking it's something bad because you don't like it very much but lean into the feeling that is say how interesting that I do feel like this right now and um, most of the time this is quite understandable that you do feel like this but naming your feeling is a very powerful thing to do for yourself. And you do this without judgment. It's not about, I shouldn't feel like this. Say just how interesting I do feel like this. And so that would be to me, one of the things that you can do that will help you um, get through this, uh, these difficult times. Now, uh, and, and one of the words that's come up a lot in the impact sessions with the comments that you've made is I feel bored and um, boredom um, funnily enough you can make boredom a positive uh, this is a time once, once you name this is what you're feeling you can also 
take time to think take time to notice yourself take time to notice even the tiny things that are around you in in the room you, you know there are many people in the world who have been uh, put in prison who live who've had to live many many years just in one cell and without seeing anybody else and many of those ones some of them have become really great have developed a real sense of themselves and so here's your chance to really understand yourself notice what you feel accept yourself don't become judgmental um one of the interesting things about in our country our prime minister has said the key to all of this is kindness mm. uh, be kind to one another but primarily be kind to yourself so uh, even when you are feeling r really bad you don't you don't feel good just remember about being kind to yourself name your feelings and then just uh, as if it was somebody else if it was a little child telling you this is what you this is what they feel what would be your response to them it would be a kindness so this is what i would the first very first thing i would encourage you to do is to be kind to yourself name your feelings and accept yourself this is how you are feeling right now because the feelings will change and they will yes. move from from there to there so th that's what i would say and um exactly. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much, John, for sharing in a so nice way. Okay, and I can see in the comment box, already audience came up with the questions. So I would like to proceed further with the questions. So the first question I would like to take from, uh, the question came from Fahmida. She said that, how can we motivate ourselves for doing anything great and exceptional? Mm. Okay. So it's a definitely a good question. So first I would like to start with Palace. <laughs> okay, over to Palace. Well, thank you. Um, great and exceptional. I'm sure you know that I did a TEDx talk uh, on how to lead an extraordinary life. And what I did was redefine extraordinary as one step beyond the ordinary. Because we are, each one of us has dreams and desires to live these big lives and make these incredible impacts and contribute to society. But every one of us has to take an individual step, little baby steps on the way to doing something great and extraordinary. So what I say to people is to look very closely at what you're best at doing. Not what you wish you were best at doing, but what you really are good at doing and then build on that and then see if that overlaps with something that you're passionate about or that is very a strong value for you so that you really strongly believe in and so you build on that and then you train in that but step by step by step build on that strongest part of you and then find a way to contribute that to the world in some way and again greatness i feel if i've done a professional public speaking event, if I have touched one person and one person leaves with one thing that they can apply to change their life on that day, then I have succeeded. And then it's a ripple effect from there. I mean, look at all of you who are referring this to other friends. One person can make a huge difference. And through that, greatness is achieved by all of us working together. Exactly. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So, okay, I will uh, come with one after another question to one by one to our guests <laughs> because our frame is to the full of experts, people. <laughs> okay, so the next one, uh, next question came from Shujit. He said that how Judas youth can contribute themselves in up uplifting their skills development or something better for the nation? Okay, so I would like to pass this question first to Madeline Taylor. Uh, Madeline, can you hear us? So welcome everybody who's come from all around the world. Yes. So I hope you can hear me. Um, those of you from Uganda, from Sri Lanka, Lanka, from Bangladesh, from Nepal, and from Afghanistan, and anyone in New Zealand. 
So the question about how can we as youth build our skills that enable us to lift our country, the first thing that we always have to do whenever there is a problem and to be going forward is to take care of us and think about our own skills. Alice has said, know what you are good at and what you're passionate about and recognize how you can create connection with other people who are working in this area so that you can join them. At the moment, because our ability to be able to work is very small, so one way to do this is to volunteer. Exactly. Especially when we are not able to find a because otherwise we get very bored and we get sad. So my suggestion is every day you create a timetable for yourself, a timetable to have fun, a timetable to connect with your friends, a timetable to volunteer your time, a timetable to do some uh, learning about a new skill that you want to develop, whether that is cooking or cleaning or ironing, very, very small, or whether it is growing a new language. Choose one and begin. And it, you don't have to be perfect to start. You only have to start. So all of us begin one step at a time. We firstly have to make sure that we are safe and well and that we can use our time in a way that uplifts up, makes people feel joyous and happy to be with us. And so spending time lifting your mood, dancing, singing, any time. One of the questions is how do we keep ourselves being? And there are two things that I think help us. The first one is to every day practice breathing slowly for one minute, three times a day. And if we manage to slow our breathing down so that we only have one breath every minute, you won't die. Just slow down your breathing. Your brain will feel calmer and you will be able to problem solve. The other thing is to think about how you can focus. So we can do that very easily. Right now, pick up a pen or a book or, or, or a, it doesn't matter, a and really look at it. Notice the curve. Yeah. <laughs> Notice what it looks like inside. Feel it and spend time focusing on the now. One minute a day, sorry, one minute three times a day focusing, one minute three breathing and you will change your life. So I will yeah. hand over now to Zanatun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madeline. Okay, so I'm getting lots of lots of questions in the comment box. Uh, next question. Okay, another beautiful question. I will come that, uh, with that question to Kathy. Okay, the question came from uh, Naim. He said that I'm Naim Hassan. I'm a student of European Un uh, University of Bangladesh. And I want to be a lawyer. But besides, I want to develop my IT knowledge and about business. What should I do now? Which necessary steps should I need to take? You have an amazing opportunity at the moment to be able to learn and to study. Right in front of you, you have a computer or a phone, and that has so much information in there that can help you. You can 
watch TED Talks. You can watch uh, talk from all around the world to be able to increase your knowledge around anything that you want to learn about. So as you're uh, looking out there at the information that is out there, look for the things following on from what Palace was talking about. What are the things that are interesting you in what you're reading about? What do you want to learn more about? And then go and access the courses or the talks to learn more about those things. You have incredible opportunity right now to be able to use, to learn all sorts of skills um, that will um, enhance your practice as a lawyer as well and um, enhance your life. So not only those IT skills, but also the soft skills, the skills around people, the skills around yourself, who you are, what your strengths are, all of those things will be important. And then there's the skills around being in business. And again, there are so many places that you can go to learn about being in business online. Um, I know that uh, there is a university called Genius U that has many courses there about being an entrepreneur. Uh, there are impact sessions within this uh, IYS on being an entrepreneur. So there are so many places around the world to be able to find those courses. Learn about finance, learn about marketing, learn about websites, learn about um, cash flow forecasts, learn about your customers. What are the skills that you have? What are the needs of the people? And how can you solve those needs? Look for the needs, provide solutions. Yeah. Lots of, Thank you. Lots of, lots of potential there. <laughs> lots yeah. of, yes. Yes. Thank you, Kathy. So, dear audience, yes, please stay with us as, and keep asking your questions because you can see here are the guest speakers and they are ready to give the answers and guide you for the right path. Okay. Yeah. So, the next Ishida, question. Before you go to yes. the next question, sorry, Ishida, before you go, to, sure. I just like to address three more countries. I see the participants from Philippines, USA, yes. and Uganda. Thank you. Thank you. And Uganda. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ahmed, Thank you. for uh, adding those uh, countries because there are lots of comments and I'm missing the country's names. I know. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. So the next question, uh, I will come with the question uh, to Angela. Okay. The question from Ahmed Labiba. She said that I know English language, even I can talk it but I don't communicate any unknown person. Then how could I speak freely others and uh, and participate in any public speaking competition? Okay, over to Angela. Right, thank you. Well, that's a great question because I think you have almost answered your question in your question <laughs> and I'll explain why in a moment. <laughs> um, before I do that, I made some notes as I was thinking about the session today and it's almost as though Madeline and Kathy read them because they have said almost the same <laughs> the same points. So I'm going to start with that and then lead on more into us answering this question because I think we all have the same thoughts around the importance of learning something every day. So even when you're really demotivated or feeling quite depressed or you think, oh, there's no hope, we've got another day, we can't go anywhere, set yourself a challenge to learn something every day. It might be a really big skill like public speaking, it might be related to your law studies, or it might be a small thing like trying a new recipe using some ingredients you didn't even know you had in your pantry. Or it might be something completely different that you've never thought or heard of and you've just listen to a podcast like I listened to one today on um, how vanilla is grown and extracted. Now I'm a baker, I love to bake with vanilla, but now I know the process, I understand why it's so expensive. That was great learning. It's not related to my current work, but it has stimulated me to think, ah, oh, also I know all the people involved in that process now, I understand why it's charging, why, why the cost is that amount. I want to challenge you to do three things every day. So Madeline has given you a few to start with and I agree we can't do anything if we're not breathing and if we're not calm. So start that way. I want to challenge you to read something new every day. It can be a small amount, it could be just for 10 minutes and I'm not talking about 
necessarily reading the news because some of that can be, it's important to be informed, but at the moment there is a lot of bad news and it's very hard to not feel overwhelmed by all of that. So read something different every day. Maybe look at some blogs, some motivational um, writing from other people. Something, anything, but make a point of it. Second point is write something every day. Just little bits. So it's very easy for the days to all seem like one and you can't remember what is today because it looked exactly like yesterday and I didn't go anywhere yesterday either. Make little notes about what you've learned. I keep a book with me yes. and I make notes and this comes around the world with me. Um, Ahmed and Zanat will know that. It comes with me everywhere and things that I um, find out or learn or come across in a session like this, I've already made some notes that I'm going to be writing down from this session. And not only does that help focus my thinking and what I've learned, but I can go back later and think, hmm, back on this day, I had this question and I wondered something. Tomorrow's learning, I'm going to find out the answer to that. If you don't write it down, then it's not to say that you're not learning, but the process of writing helps you keep it in your mind. And the most important thing is ask further questions. Now, you're probably wondering, when am I going to actually answer your question? My third suggestion for you to do every day is to contact someone. It's important yep. to keep in contact with people and people that are outside of your home because that is hard to just have the same people there and they probably want to talk to other people too. Pick up your phone, come onto Facebook, message somebody, this is your chance to practice. It might be your public thinking skill, um, public speaking skills. Share with them what you've learnt. Share with them what you wrote down. It might not be the same person every day, but you might have two or three people that you say, right, we're going to come together and ask each other, what have you learnt today? Yeah. Then, yep. when they tell you what they've, they've learnt, you say to them, so now what will you do that you know this? What change will you make? Now, I know you're wanting to practice your public speaking skills with people you don't know, but actually, if you have some friends or some family that you trust, you can practice with them and they can give you feedback on how things are going. Now, hopefully their feedback is encouraging and positive and it will say things to you like you spoke very topic hopefully they won't say um, oh what was that all about <laughs> but you can also give them some feedback on their skills as well the important yeah. thing though is you're always learning you're always practicing when yes. the opportunity comes later to speak in public then you'll be prepared yep. because you're always yep. thinking about something new so keep your mind active read something every day write something every day, that's where the difference is, and share that every single day. The opportunities will come later on, but this yes. will keep you, on, yep. keep you fresh. Thank you. Thank you so much, Angela. Excellent. Okay, so dear audience, uh, I think you all are enjoying because I can see that your comments over here. So thank you for staying with us and please stay with us and keep asking the question. And now I'm coming again with another beautiful question. And the beautiful question will be over to Mr. Amit. <laughs> yes, ah. I know you were are, you are silent for a long time. So this is for you. <laughs> so the question came from <laughs> Susan Asan. He said that what is the difference between passion and reality? Can passion can't be a reality rather than only a dream? I think passion can be reality and actually it's, it is my opinion and it is completely my idea like you cannot like just like um, instantly find your passion it takes a long time to uh, work with different ideas and gradually you find oh this is the area I think this is the most suited me so it takes time to find out your passion and um, over the time when you play with things play with ideas different ideas I think then you actually gradually grab your passion areas then you can find and even though sometimes you find a passion area but 
uh, when you try to pursue that, you will face a lot of uh, challenges and you can actually shift. So there's so many ways, but the thing is you have to be active on that. You just cannot just if things like, oh, it's a dream and uh, whatever I'll do, uh, even you think this is your passion, but probably when you start doing something, you'll find that it might not be your passion. So this is very um, interesting area. And uh, I would rather say that you every time you play with ideas and try to find out because it takes time. It, you cannot just find um, in a steady passion. But uh, Zanata, I'd like to just ask two more other questions. I thought you were just going to throw yeah. me that question, but you didn't know. So one thing is how to develop the uh, business yeah. idea. I think uh, this yeah. is the area I, I'm very much confident to say something. The develop business idea is to have your observation. Because if you don't observe what's happening around you, you cannot develop your business idea. And I was surprised to see that one of my friends just uh, four months back, he was struggling with the business. But yesterday we had a talk and he always talked with me about the ideas and other things. And he is now fantastic business with the home deliveries. So, and, and he already rented like uh, four vehicles and uh, already have more than 16 people. One six, one six, 16 people are working for his business. When he was just four months back, he was struggling that what will going to happen in business. So these are the things like they observe, they take the initiative and they go for the action. So uh, to develop your business skill, you have to develop your observation skill, which is very important. And, and to find out even as general service, you are uh, observing some service and you think how you can improvise that service and uh, can present to your client or if you start this business, what are the other way? So you, you can think in a different way. Like if, I, uh, if you are a service receiver, that you are a customer, what what other things you expect from your service delivery or the per person delivering your service? So this is the way you can you can talk and you can uh, try to observe um, how we can develop your business. This is one thing. And another challenge is what to learn in this pandemic situation. Uh, actually, one big thing I was always um, share with everyone, and this is actually come a sub motto or sub logo or sub theme of our summit. This like most of the youth are actually they react they don't take action or they don't act i i found I, I just you put one or two sentences and then i don't know what to do i cannot find this i cannot do this so this is that like you are so much like uh, uh like not settled down you are reacting and every time uh we are in the facebook we are just giving our reactions so this is, I think I'm requesting everyone to act. That's when you have to calm down, what the Madeline said, that you have to calm down yourself and think, uh, breathe, and then you can understand that what to do next. So this is what, so uh, in this pandemic situation, there's so many things you can learn, but uh, before learning, you have to think that how this will really help you um, upcoming days. So it is not for us to say you learn computer, you learn this or you learn English, but all these are important. All these are important because language is important, IT skill is important, and also the management skill, which is very important. And it doesn't matter that um, whether you, you are a, a student of commerce or science, or you need, you have to, you have to learn the management skill. And it is called, we call nowadays, we call soft skill or people skill. The more you have the soft skill training, uh, the more you can participate with this. And this soft skill actually can be useful for any kind of profession. So this is why we always focus on soft skill, soft skill, soft skill. Thank you, Nishida. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ahmed. OK, so I can see like one uh, most common questions coming from most of the audience. The question mm -hmm. uh, is like that. Um, I, want, uh, I want to go abroad for the higher studies, but in this situation, what should I do or what steps I should take? So it's an open question for all of you. Who wants to answer first? <laughs> John. 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 No, yeah, yes. <laughs> well, um, one of the really frustrating things is when you want to go abroad, you may even have a scholarship. However, at the moment, you can't. And so... Um, the first thing is to um, manage the frustration. I notice um, there's a question there from somebody saying, I get really emotional all the time and can't control this. Well, you can actually control your own emotions and what you feel, and uh, whether that's frustration or anger or any other thing. 
you can learn to do that. Um, th this is one of the things that we will be, we are teaching in the, the Youth Summit um, and we'll continue to teach it throughout the year. So stay connected with us because we'll teach you these things. Um, but the, so it's really just at the moment, I don't know how to control my frustration for not being able to go abroad. But um, so uh, um, that would be one of the first things, just to think that, yes, you do need to wait. And I mean, you have to wait anyway. It might be next year that you've been accepted. But in, in our current situation with the pandemic, we don't know how long it's going to be before you can travel abroad. So that, that would be the very first thing is to learn how to calm yourself down, how to wait, how to be patient. Uh, I love those things that Madeline said before about uh, spending time each day just uh, admiring and, and understanding one simple thing like a pencil um, and breathing slowly. So these are some of the things in getting ready to go abroad because abroad you will still have all the same ch challenges that you have at home. Yeah. Uh, actually even more um, they won't solve all your problems um, but I mean it's a wonderful thing and if you can get to travel abroad and study and learn how wonderful is that but first of all it's about slowing down um, dealing with yourself managing your own emotions learning to manage your own emotions uh, beforehand so that would be my first response others will say other things Thank you. Thank Palace. you, Jia. So yes, Palace, would you like to add something here? Um, well, one thing that keeps going through my mind is that this pandemic is a situation and in New Zealand, we are somewhat back to normal, but we do, we did have those six weeks in which we had to stay inside and be still. And someone gave me a card once and it said, she finally got quiet enough to hear her soul speak. And in our world, with all of the distractions that we have and the opportunities that we have or responsibilities that we have, sometimes it's very hard to get quiet enough. And so there was discussion about people being bored. And in boredom is this rich opportunity to really tune in to what's going on in your heart and in your soul, not just in your head and what the world is telling you you should do or need to do. Um, so getting quiet and really listening and listening, not just by thinking, but feeling is really important. And as you do these things that everyone's recommending, I always say, do one thing that's hard each day and do one mm. thing that brings you joy each day. But as yes. you start to do these things and decide how to spend your time and energy, you will feel what it's like. Is it rewarding? or is it not? And so the, the, the closer you get to your truth and the clearer you become about who you are, the better prepared you will be about going overseas. I mentioned yeah. that I lived in the UK and I lived there when I was in my teens and early twenties. And I didn't have a great sense of self at the time. I was exploring a lot, but I ended up with a British accent. <laughs> <laughs> and that was so emblematic. It was so uh, such an evidence that I didn't really know who I was. So this is a unique time in our history, our world history, to get quiet yeah. enough to hear who we are inside. And then exactly. when the time comes, don't yeah. believe that you have to be perfect. Perfect, per Trying to be perfect is the perfect way to fail. And so when you go, just go and, and do the best that you can because you will learn uh, through all of these processes. But we're in a rush and we're in a hurry to get out there. And I get it, I understand it, but it's really a gift in a weird way that we've been given in this world with so much noise to get quiet for a little while. Mm. Yeah. Great, thank you. Thank you, fellas. Should I supplement okay. one thing? Should I, should I supplement just one thing? Yeah. Sure. Okay, yes. the, the idea is like, um, if you're really passionate, because I know that's sometimes what we do, just throw a question and then I'm sure sometimes you are not here actually. You just throw a question and then leave. Anyway, for anyone who wants to go abroad or have any plan for uh, study abroad, because I'm from Asia, so I know this is, and I also abroad. So the I think at this current situation, I, I would rather ask you to develop some skills 
again, the, I will focus on only the soft skill because uh, many of you are planning for um, when you go for the higher study, you are looking for job and also. So have some soft skill, which is very important. Have some IT skill. This is also and the communication of that emotional intelligence, which is very important. And we are here discussing about this thing and we'll provide some more uh, content on this or more um, higher level of trainings uh, from this platform sooner. So um, I would rather ask you to utilize your time and focus and start browsing the information from the different universities. What are they are offering? What subject you are actually looking? There are thousands of universities. So which country you like? Which university you want to? And browse the area, not only the university. Browse the area, which area this university is situated, and then what kind of other facilities. So you have plenty of things to study before go for for any university. So and look for the option, like what are the scholarship opportunity or what are the self finance opportunity. Is there any any way you can uh, do a start from here now? Because many uh, university in um, are now going to start as a home base. You can start from your home now for at least one year or two years, and then could be the final year after two years you can fly. So. It's still the opportunity, but you have to it's just not only throw the question, you have to take the action. So there's a lot of way, plenty of way to develop yourself. Ishira. Thank you. Thank you, Ahmed. OK, mm -hmm. so uh, I will go further with the question. But before taking any question, uh, mm -hmm. with the permission from all of you, can I mm -hmm. disclose the surprise with our audience? Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, because I can see like uh, lots of people new joined uh, in the online session. Okay, so mm -hmm. dear lovely and amazing audience, for all of you, just we would like to share from IYS Twenty Twenty platform that till today we have got seventy eight thousand plus registered participants for our third International Youth Summit and hey. from five plus countries. Okay, we can give a big hand for all of yeah. us. <laughs> uh, yes, so a big shout out for our Raptor mm. Schools Development <laughs> Academy, Thriving Under Fire, uh, BSI, uh, then uh, our all of all of all of our uh, organizations and our IYS team and definitely our IYS officials who are working really hard to make this event a grand success. So yeah. thank you all once again. Last but not the least, definitely our audience and our participants, they, they de deserve a big hand from all of us because of their spontaneous participation. We can make it today. And definitely <laughs> we would like to add here that, yes, our summit launched uh, back in uh, 18 May and it's going to be continued till 30th of December. 2020 so definitely if you didn't uh, register yourself yet please do it right now take the action and be a part of this biggest virtual summit okay thank you yeah. once again everyone for make, making and helping us to make this event grand success <laughs> thank you okay. so much welcome okay so back to the question right now i can see that there are lots of questions that are coming uh, about the emotional intelligence like how to develop the emotional intelligence and how it can uh, it may help them to turn their passion into profession and also there was another uh, question uh, john also mentioned about that uh, uh, in, in his uh, last answer that how can they uh, develop their emotional uh, intelligence not only for personal as well for the professional behavior so i would like to come one by one with this question because i can see audience are really interested to know about that and i would like to know all of your input about that okay so let's start with kathy first this time <laughs> Okay, uh, I can see many, many comments there around depression, and yes. that is a huge problem around many, many countries in the world. And I know that New Zealand has one of the highest rates of youth suicide in New Ze in uh, in the world as well. So, it is a, a, a very big concern of mine. And I was talking to a person the other day and said, you know, what can we do? What is the biggest thing that we can do to help young people? Uh, deal with the anxiety, with the the issues that they are facing. And it comes straight back to de developing that emotional intelligence. 
there were two things that she talked about being the most important. And the first one was what Madeline alluded to. And it's a thing called mindfulness. And it is yeah. stopping and taking that time to be able to focus, slowing everything down, uh, slowing your breathing down, um, focusing on one particular um, thing and just taking that time to really slow everything down so that you can um, slow down. Yes. Is yes. really the most important thing with that. And that calms down your amygdala. It calms down the frantic thoughts, the anxiety that's going on in your head. The second thing she talked about was something called CBT. CBT stands for Cognitive Behaviour Therapy. And it is so, so powerful. This is developing that awareness of the thoughts that are going on through your head. And then just like we've been, John was talking about tonight with acknowledging your emotions. There's no judgment on this, you know. This is how I'm feeling. It's exactly the same as you become more and more aware of those thoughts that are going through your head. But you can take control of those thoughts. You can see those thoughts and think, is this helpful for me? And if not, then you can change that thought. So if you start to identify, start to notice the thoughts that are going through your mind about yourself, those thoughts that are not helpful, work out what you're going to say instead. And I can give you two examples from my own life of where I have used this and where it has been really, really helpful. The first one is around, I haven't got enough time. And when I'm saying, I haven't got enough time, I haven't got enough time, I can feel myself getting more and more and more stressed. And that's not helpful. What I now say when to myself when I realize that I'm becoming more stressed is I say, I have all the time I need to do the things I have to do with ease. And I feel myself calming right down. And then I can do the things that I need to do. And I'm not stressed anymore. And it's amazing what happens. The second thought that I've had many, many times, and it is such a common thought in so many people that I work with, is the thought, I can't do this. Yeah. Can you relate to that thought? I know many people can. And it's a thought that I've had so often. What I do now when I have that thought is I just go, stop. I can do this. How? Yeah. What do I need to do? Exactly. And just stopping my thinking and asking myself that question. I can do this. <clears throat> what do I need? How? It opens up my thinking to new possibilities. So you have got this. You can do this. There is a future. There is a hope. What can yep. you do to make it possible in your life? Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Kathy. Okay, so uh, Angela, would you like to add something here? Yes, ab absolutely. I'm looking at the questions and my goodness, there are so many, which <laughs> is a really good sign because it shows people are yep. thinking and they're engaged in the topic <clears throat> and they're coming up with um, a whole range of questions. So some of the questions that I'm seeing up the side of my screen, and gosh, they're going fast because there are lots of them, um, are about things like which university should I apply for, which courses should I do, which um, I want to do this degree. I can't answer that question for you, but what I want to do is yeah. just give you some ideas about types of learning. So this is what we call formal learning, and that will happen at a university or another educational institution, and you'll come out with a degree or a qualification, and that's very valuable and very important, and it's a good starting point. Now, you're probably thinking, what do you mean starting point? I've finished my degree. 
so I'm done. Actually, you're not. You're just starting. Because the whole world is full of what we call informal learning. This is what you learn on a job when you start something new. This is what you learn when you decide to read something every day, to write something every day, and to contact someone about it. This is what yeah. you learn when you talk to people about different subjects that you know nothing about, or maybe you're the, the expert in it. And most of your learning will happen informally. So your degree is very important. Um, I've worked for many years for de degrees and qualifications that I'm very proud of, but that wasn't my end. That was actually the start, because that will teach you an academic subject. It might teach you very specific information about, about your profession, but the things you can learn every day is communication, um, emotional intelligence, writing, reading, how to learn, relating to others. There are so many things, and those aren't going to give you a degree, but they are almost, well, I'd say they are more valuable. So I don't want to um, say that what you're studying at university isn't valuable, because it is very, very valuable, but that's not it. Open yourself up to different types of learning. Don't think, what will I get at the end of this? Will I have a certificate? Mm -hmm. Will I have a piece of paper? Think, how will this help me? What can I now do? What will I learn next? So always keep learning. That's what I, that's, that's yep. how I try to live. There's one yep. more comment that I think also relates to it. And it was a question that was asked a little while back, but I think I've remembered it. And somebody commented that when they try something new, they're very keen at the start and then lose interest after a few days yep. or after a, bit, a few weeks. And that's actually natural. My challenge to you is to say, okay, not only how can I be interested in doing the same thing, but how can I get to the next level? How can I challenge myself to be better at it or learn something different? Because when you are learning and engaged, then your interest will stay and you'll want to keep doing more. If you just learn things and you think you're going to master one skill and you get to that level and you say, right, I'm finished, it's actually human nature to say, yeah. I'm not going to be interested any longer. So challenge yeah. yourself. Sometimes if you have a good employer yes. who says, oh, here's an opportunity you might like, and they might notice that you're ready for challenges, that, that is great. The answer is always, yes, I would like to do that. But sometimes those opportunities don't come, and you have to make that for yourself. So you think, right, what else can I learn about this job? What can I learn about a whole other area? Set yourself those challenges. Once we stop learning, we lose motivation. Yeah, yep. thank, thank you. you so much. Okay. Thank you, Angela. Yes. Okay, I got one more question. I would like to come with that question to Madeline. Uh, that one asked that how can they manage their anger? Over to Madeline. Oh dear. Yes. Madeline seems to be so it's this okay. yeah hi <laughs> this is my monkey breathing which is part of breathing to <laughs> yeah. oh and stay very still i think which is what Matt was doing. No. Yeah. okay <laughs> let me get a couple of monkeys that so um reaching and um China, oh, from maybe. the USA, from yeah. Jamaica, yes. in Japan. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Madeline, your voice is breaking up very seriously. So, yes. dealing with anger yep. is just another emotion, like happiness, or and we often have is. Okay, uh, okay, I will. Uh, Madeline, uh, Madeline, sorry for interruption. I think uh, your voice is breaking up. It may be helpful if you turn off your videos and talk, then maybe network can cover the voice uh, in a good way. So if, uh, uh, by the time she can fix that, and I, I will pass that question to John. Thank you. <laughs> there, Madeline, you've switched off your video. Do you want to speak? How to does this yeah, sound? Yeah, it's good. Better, yes. better. 
Better, better. Now we can hear. Yes. You go for it, Madeline. Yes, Madeline. Carry so, on. one of the things about many about managing any emotion is that it doesn't matter what the emotion is, the feeling is strong. And if we have a bad voice in our head, as Angela has said, then we are beating ourselves up. And it's like those two monkeys on our shoulder. One of them saying, I'm really cranky, I'm being stop, 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 someone. And the other person on your shoulder is saying, be calm, be the best person you can be. And it's a fight going on in your head. And so we need to be able to pay attention to the part of you that you want to be. So think about your values and think about the person that you want to be in the world. And if you use that as a way of helping you guide the two voices in your head you are going to feed, that, you, that will help you to manage yourself. Now, in the time of one of the problems is that we have a lot of sadness and a lot of grief yep. and we do not recognize the feelings in our bodies that are grief and sadness so one of the exercises that kathy and i talked about doing was every day lying on the floor if it's in a nice sunny spot, that is good. And take a big, big, big deep breath in and breathe out your sadness. So, so lying on your, breathing out and breathing in and allowing the tension in your back. To, and I promise you, if you do that every day, for eight or 10 minutes, again, you will feel very different. You may even find that you cry, but the important thing is to let that grief out because yeah. you are carrying more than you need to. It's like you have a heavy backpack on your shoulders of sadness, of all the deaths that you are watching, all the changes that you have come across and so I also want to say two more things while I've got the mic <laughs> the first one is about being an entrepreneur yes and when you are an entrepreneur you have to decide what you're going to sell so you need a skill or a talent and actually in today's world it could be how to cut a straight line with a piece of on a piece of paper and truly there are some crazy people who will want to buy that off you yeah so it doesn't matter how crazy the idea is if you create a facebook page and you have something to sell you will find a community that wants to buy it so begin the other thing you need to do is to find a mentor, someone who you can talk to at your concerns and yeah. someone who can to actions. Is a few people have talked about the importance of agriculture. And of course, yes. if we don't feed ourselves through agriculture, we're going to be in trouble. So please yep. keep growing beautiful things. Mm -hmm. In the city, we can still do that by micro, uh, creating micro gar cli uh, yeah. uh, gardens. And one of the really interesting abilities is to think about permaculture and go online and Google what that looks like, which is about maintaining a sustainable system in which we live. 
And we can do that within our own houses. We can do uh, within our own apartments. So please, if you're interested in looking at being more sustainable within your small group, think about exploring permaculture and think about um, supporting yourselves as an entrepreneur. You could grow mung beans in your apartment and sell it as live vegetables to your co-apartment dwellers. So yeah. managing our emotions and the grief, kicking off, grow a business from a skill or a piece of uh, or a piece of knowledge that you have that you want to share. The most important thing is to do it. It does not have to be perfect. You can grow it, develop, and change over the time. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Okay, now you can have your camera back, please. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> you can turn on the camera. Oh, no. Thank you so much, Madeline. Thank you. <laughs> you see that? Can I just put? Just, can I just take? Yeah, just a few things because I I know that you're yeah, going to miss that. I would like to add, yeah. Madeline. Uh, people are really loving your two dolls when you were playing with them. <laughs> okay, over to Amit. Okay, so um, one question came about the honesty, and I'm always uh, say about this. If you the it is challenging in some countries, uh, but I'm always respect that. Um, don't follow that. You you said that whether I should follow with the um, uh, if this uh, honest uh, dishonest practice should I follow or not? I I I rather say that. Honesty is being yourself. How you say also that how we can contribute to the society. I, I think the first and most important thing I have learned from my life that first develop yourself. Uh, mm. If you can develop yourself, you can contribute to your family. Then your whole family can contribute to the community, and the community can contribute to the country. So develop yourself, build your uh, skills, and remain um, very much like uh, uh, as like. Um, practice the honesty ethical things so this is the most important thing uh, than any other things please you you will you can sleep well at the night time if you are honest you can at least sleep uh, at the night time and it is very important and to be honest um, uh, again uh, the the reward are amazing if you are honest if you, you and even though you, if you remain honest and you have you can achieve everything in your life if you still remain honest there is no barrier the second thing for everyone because there's similar question uh, that you are losing motivation or you don't know what to yes. do the first thing first and most important thing to achieve anything that you have to write it down on a piece of paper it's just or it could be like on you must have a maintain a diary or write it down because most of the time you all think just always, always think i'll do this i'll do that i'll do this just Think about one one simple metaphor I always use in my training. That the things is like, if you have a mobile phone or if you have a laptop, you just download all the app, apps and application, and you have thousands of files and photographs. And what will happen? Your phone or laptop will not run properly. So yes. what do you do? You delete some file. You download some things. You keep the other. Uh, you have a additional drive, and you you just transfer everything, or you have to format everything. So that your your phone, you have to format your phone, or you have to uh, format your laptop hard disk, so that you can have. It. So similarly, most of the people, most of the people, they if they think everything they keep in their mind, they think that I can keep everything, but it actually it actually down your thinking process. It, it, so it is better to if you have precisely whatever the um, whatever the ideas or whatever the things you want to achieve, write it down. You have three things to do, like your business, your study, and then family care. You can write it down in, in, and then you can plan your day. Unless you work on that, you cannot achieve. You can just think and go for motivational speech and go for this. This will never last. Motivational speech that we always said it never lasts for long. It's just like a, like brushing or taking the bath every single shower. day. So shower, yeah. So you have to you have to build that strategy. You have to build the to, you have to use the tools. More important, you have to take the action. Unless mm. you take action, nothing will, will last. So you will just think and you go for this platform. After this platform, you go for another platform and then you get a lot of negative things and then you, you lose your motivation. So the first and most important thing, take action. Don't react, but take action. Thank you, Ishtar. Mm. Thank you, Madeline. 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 Thank
thank you thank you so much ahmed okay i i got one question that's from uh, that's for kathy uh, question mm-hmm. came from tamzit uh, my question is to kathy shepard that how can we effectively move or look forward to future by letting go the past incidents or failures mm. this is a really good question and i saw this in the feed as well so i'm really glad ishta that you have pulled that one out <laughs> This is a really really hard one because it's again one of those thoughts that goes through our mind oh you stupid fool you shouldn't have done that you shouldn't have done that you're useless and all of this sort of stuff and we have to be able to stop those thoughts coming through and one of the there's two things that I have found have been really really useful in this and one of them is to think about every single day is a new day and that stuff was yesterday right and today i'm starting again and that is what i'm focusing on that is the thing that i'm aiming towards and what's one step that i can take towards that particular thing today so again it's about that discipline it's about one step at a time which each one of us have talked about in different ways having that focus is so important the the focus on the one thing that you're going to take action on and i said that i had two thoughts the second one is about a bad day because we all have bad days but do we need to have the whole day as a bad day how long do you need on this particular day do you need a half day for your bad day do you need <laughs> Two hours? <laughs> One minute would be enough. Okay, so have your bad day. Allow yourself to have your bad day, your bad hour, yeah. your bad ten minutes, and then yeah. you can start again because now you have yeah. a new day to move yes. towards your area of focus. So I hope exactly. that that is useful for you. That is what I do, and it is a really, really important <laughs> skill in our life because we exactly. all yeah. screw up. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Just, just really add one more thing. Even though we are just, I, I just last night I shared with Ishita. So like, I, I just suddenly just lost all my motivation to do any work. So what I did, I just watched a movie, and the <laughs> the morning I was fully charged and just like after even after that, just it, it could be one one and a half hour movie, and that's enough for me. I'm just enjoying. I just divert my myself to the movie and I regain and I have a good sleep and wake up and I'm. good good to go for the new new days and new things so it's not like that we are trainer we don't have we also have the same feelings same challenges same bad day good days everything but we take the action so i i can i can like i can have a bad comments in the facebook or i can see myself more bad thing but i just drive at my uh, things and i just tell myself like i'm just share with ishita that i'm not feeling good to do any work tonight so i'd rather watch a movie that's it just share my feelings and then i we can go forward yes thank you so much yeah thank you thank you amit okay so uh, i can see that we are already running out of time i will take one question and then i will come for the for all of our to, to the, all our guests uh, for the closing remarks so the question uh, I would like to or, pass this that, you can you can just ask to the like the uh, our guests to choose anything they wants to share yeah yeah sure so after this question yeah. yes uh, be- because yeah. you can also see the comment box so yeah. if you want you can also uh, take the question from there so this question i would like to uh, place uh, to uh, palace the question is when i generally stay alone in a dark house at my bed i feel too much depressed by about my career and future i see full of dark future have any solution mm. so but to balance first of all i'm you know it it makes me sad to see that and i it's it's sad to see so many people feeling that way and yet we do understand why we've talked about some of the reasons because there's a lot of bad news out there and there are difficult things happening um a couple of things come through for me one is a dark room sunlight is incredibly important it impacts our mood so i remember being in high school at a boarding school and seeing people who were very depressed close their curtains and getting out into the sunlight and moving your body to change the chemicals in your body is really important to get endorphins moving the happy things 
that yeah. um, make us feel happy. So there's that. The second thing is that our brains are predetermined to focus on the negative because when we were cavemen and women, we had to be aware of the negative. When was the saber toothed tiger going to jump out from around the corner and surprise us? So we're wired to, to focus on the negative. So we have to remind ourselves that our brain's going to go to the negative, but we do need to think about the positive. So sometimes when you're depressed, you know, you feel that that emotion is everything. But an emotion passes, as so many people have said here today, it, it doesn't last forever. And it isn't who you are, it is just what you are feeling at that time. Kathy said it, you know, give yourself a time frame and then do something, open the curtains, go outside, get exercise, but also train your brain, not just to focus on that bad emotion, think about what there is to be grateful for in, in life. If you are lucky enough right now to be healthy and not be actually fighting this terrible virus, that's something to be grateful for. To be grateful for this, this, this forum and this summit and this opportunity to connect with one another. We have to break things down to little tiny bits and say, well, this little thing is good and that little thing is good. So for me, I think it's important to understand that you are not your emotions. Um, you, you feel them, but you can push past them and it does take effort. And that's the final thing I'll say. I have this little elephant that's on my desk <laughs> and I use it when I coach people because there's yeah. a thing about habits. When you change your habit and you have to change the way that your neural pathways are set up, they say it's, it's like getting on top of this elephant and trying to make it move. And that takes a lot of work and a lot of effort and a lot of time and patience. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to change the way we're focused and how we're feeling. And it's like making an elephant move. So mm -hmm. what would you do? You'd feed it. You'd feed it good things, peanuts and bananas. And, you know, give yourself little rewards throughout the day to help you do it. But it's going to be hard. However, it can be done. Elephants do turn around. So I'll leave it on that yeah. note. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Phyllis. It can was really can great. I just, can I just say one more thing? Talking sure. about turning sure. Sure. And I think of cruise ships, you know, those great big ships. Yeah. You yes. cannot turn a cruise ship that is not moving. Okay, <laughs> so this comes back to what Ahmed has been talking about is take action, start in some sort of direction, and then you can adjust the direction that you are going in. So start moving, take action, and keep your eyes on where you're wanting to go. There is a future, there is a hope. Keep going, yeah, connect with people. Yes, thank you, excellent, thank you, Kathy, excellent. Okay. So moving on, okay. Would you like to take questions from the comment box, or you want me to throw the question? No, I think <laughs> now leave everyone. They can choose their own way a question, and sure. then they can have one minute or okay. one and a half minutes, whatever. Yeah. Okay, one minute, <laughs> one minute per, <laughs> per person. Okay, first let's start with uh, Angela. <laughs> well, mine isn't a question because I have a challenge for you. We have learned so much today. I have learned so much <laughs> yeah. today. I will yes. probably think about this for a very long time. But my challenge to you is to get out your notebook or to get something that you can write on. I want you to write down one thing you've learned from today's session. I want you to reflect and think, how could this be useful for me? It could be anything you've learned today. What further questions do you have? because it's unusual just to learn something and say, yes, I've got all of that. So think about what other questions you have and then set yourself a task. What will I learn tomorrow? You might follow up something from today's session. You might say, actually, I want to do something completely different tomorrow. That's fine. Make it, write it down. It's only four lines. Answer those questions. And that will help you plan for tomorrow as well. So if you're looking at where to start or how to get motivated, you've actually done some planning already. You already know where to start. You've found something you're interested in. You're going to learn more. You'll keep going on your learning journey. So that's my challenge to you. I would love to see people do that. I will certainly be doing that when I get offline now. My book will be filling up. 
Thank you, everyone. Wow. Great. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank you so much, Angela. OK, moving on to Madeline. OK. Uh, Madeline, can you hear us or again freezing? Yeah, it, no, no, no. It's, it's, it will come. OK. Oh, oh, sorry. Yes. So the thing I want you to take away is the ability to smile and to know how your smile is and how that your uh, physical experience. And so when you're feeling depressed, look up, smile, because it's the way you feel. And when you're feeling sad in that bed and it's dark, go stand onto the the um, the building and um, stand there in the sunlight and look up and smile. Put your wide your arms wide open and think of this little poem I'm going to read. Yes. Okay. Do one thing at a time. Do it slowly and deliberately. Do it completely. Do less. Put space between things. Develop rituals. Designate time for certain things. Devote time to... Smile and serve others. Clean and cooking become a meditation about what is necessary and so take care during this real cool time no, there's no point stopping keep going thank you thank you thank you so much Madeline okay now uh, over to John John would you like to answer from there or I have one question for you otherwise you ask the question <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, the question for uh, the question came from uh, Arfat. He said that sometimes we feel depression for no reason and also feel that I have not any goal and suicide is better option for me. How to avoid that type of feeling? Yes. Mm. I mean, this is a question that many uh, you've been asking. Many people have mentioned this. Yes. And uh, mm. it is a big deal. And it is difficult to live through, um, well, the pandemic itself is very, very difficult. But even without the pandemic, um, life, particularly as you're learning, uh, these things can be very difficult. And we've had a number of really good suggestions. Uh, most of them, the really good suggestions are very simple, like make sure you can get into the sunlight. Um, take time, breathe, remember that these feelings will pass, that your life um, um, will, you know, these feelings will pass for you, especially if you talk to other people. And probably what uh, uh, the thing I would say about all of what we are, have touched on and the, the questions that you've been asking and I've been following in the comment section there are many, many questions. Um, and it would be lovely if we could answer them all in this one session, which is just one hour and a half. But actually, these are lifetime yes. questions. And here's me. I'm 68 years old, and I'm still learning many of these things. So what I would say is stay in touch with us. That the, This Youth Summit is going through till the end of December. And um, we will have some very good things that we can offer yep. you. This takes time. So um, just as Madeline was saying in her poem, that, you know, just take time, slow down. I know that you want to get these things done in a, in a hurry and that you want, you'd like this to go away. And, um, um, you know, many of you think that the only way would be to suicide. That is the worst possible way of doing things because it doesn't actually solve solve it that you can get through it and by get going through these mm -hmm. feelings and naming them and saying yes this is what i feel now 
but as Palace said before, this is not exactly who I am. This is just who, what I am feeling now, even though at the time it feels like it is everything. But actually, it's just what I'm feeling. And um, so be curious about those feelings, but talk to us, somebody else about it. I just had a lovely meeting with a friend of mine this afternoon, and I talked about a whole lot of things that were worrying me. So I know, uh, and then I feel very good about it. And it was lovely yeah. to find somebody who can listen, talk to them. Um, who, they're not going to tell you off or judge you, but they will just listen and say, yep, this is tough. And you are more than just those feelings. You are, and there's so much future. And it takes time. Um, and that, that journey and that, that process of learning these things is a wonderful journey. And we want you to be with us. Uh, through this journey for, through the rest of this year and, wh and what we can offer because we believe it so strongly that this is why we we're offering these things to you so stay with us and we let's do this together thank you thank you thank you, john. Thank you so much thank you. john okay so uh, now i'll come to mr ahmed i have a definitely with a question uh okay uh, the question was uh, like uh, one of our audience was asking uh, to say something for procrastinators to improve themselves and reach their dreams okay i think okay thank you jack whatever i'm i was thinking that i is, i can relate on that i i'm going yes. to say two sentences one is success few rules follow every single day success few rules follow every single day failure few error of judgment every single day so the meaning is like to achieve your success you have to be disciplined and it is painful but it's still you have to you don't need to be disciplined the full everything the because it's a kind of could be kind of new for you so start with one thing like go early to the bed or have your meal on time or use less time like you have two hours in the Facebook or try to develop one skill every single day, give one hour or two hours. So few rules you have to develop gradually. You have to develop one of things, add one thing, then two things, wake up early. So few things you have to develop every single day and add one or one, or if you're comfortable with one for one week, then at the second week, you add two things in the second week. So, and follow, follow, follow. So this is very important because when you follow this uh, discipline life then you can see the progress then you can see the progress but what happened when the second statement is failure few error of judgment repeat every single day that's mean sometimes we say okay let's have watch movie for three hours or five hours because i have netflix so i can watch the whole day i can watch a movie or let's have to spend five hours or six hours on the Facebook, or let's uh, just go in the dark room and think about all the negative things, okay? And, or let's go to the Facebook and try to find out who are the negative things, what are the negative things that are happening? Or in the comments, like you always, because these are the few things, like what will going to happen if I say some negative things, or what will going to happen if I say some bad things about some people? So this has happened like, I, again, I'm requesting everyone to just see yourself, whether you are focusing on the negative things or the positive thing. And I can, uh, many, uh, fortunately from this platform, I'm I'm so happy that we have able to change people th focusing on the negative things or talking about the negative things. They are now start, okay, I don't need to focus on negative. There are so many things are positive. If I say that 10% of this event is positive, I'll focus on 10%, I'll take the 10%. I don't need to see, uh, why uh, this is happening, why this is happening, or you do, we don't need to focus on the negative thing, but if you have only 1%, even if you can take from positive, you take only 1%, but focus on the only the positive thing. The more you focus on the negative, these are the error of judgment, because you're, you are going negative and it will, it will not giving you a progress. It is always holding you back. So, the more you accumulate a negative thoughts, negative thinking, the more focus on negative things, actually it be, it automatically make a dark life of yourself. So this is my request to everyone, just follow, start your discipline by adding just one simple thing. Commit today, I'll just add one thing that also Angela said, and I'm, I'm just, just add one thing, I will not spend 
this much time on Facebook or I go sleep or I have my meal on time or I'll not focus on negative things or I'll try to manage my emotion by saying or just start with breathing things. Anything you can do from any any of the uh, speaker have uh, mentioned. So take one action, just single one action and repeat every single day. One action, but you have to be positive and every single day. So this is my thing and you will obviously get the success and everyone, please, I know you all have so many hopes, so many dreams, but write it down. Otherwise you cannot achieve, write your goals, write your dreams, it will, you can achieve. And we talk about this thing because we have a plan to conduct training session. So you'll get those things. Thank you, Ishida. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot to all of our lovely guests, because I know it's already <laughs> bedtime in New Zealand. Is and everyone, still we cover everyone? We cover yeah. everyone yeah. or anyone missed? We cover everyone. Uh, yes. I think, yeah. I think Kathy, I think Kathy, I think we missed Kathy. I think we missed can Kathy. I just, Ishida. Can I yeah, just sure. say one more thing sure. as well? And it's sure. particularly yeah. around the depression and around the negative mm. feelings that people are getting, are getting tied up with. We as human mm. beings are wired for connection. And when mm. you are sitting on Facebook, you are on your own. What I'd like to challenge you to do is to think about the people that you know or the people in the chats and so on and make connections with people that you see their name and they had an interesting comment. We have an amazing opportunity through Facebook and through Messenger to be able to connect with people in many, many places around the world. I mean, here yep. we have people from right around the world that are all talking. And these exactly. soft skills, not only do they help us learn more about ourselves, but they also help us learn more about other people. And the work that you are doing right now will help you mm -hmm. in relationships in every area of your life. <laughs> so take the time, learn about people, learn about um, yeah. different ways of doing things. It will help your English. Mm -hmm. It will help you speaking. Um, many of the issues that we've coming up in the questions here, <laughs> making connections with people will help you build yeah. many of these things and help you stay exactly. positive. Yes. And the other thing about this is that I also saw many questions come up around getting married and therefore going to have children and that being the end of your life. Can I tell you that it is absolutely and utterly not the end of your life? Please keep learning because um, it, is, it is a real privilege to be in relationship, to have children, to be able to teach your children all of these wonderful things that you are doing. You are creating the next generation of people there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, a whole mixed bag of things to finish with, but connect with people, enjoy what you are doing and enjoy what you are learning. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, Cathy. So, Palace, would you like from to... John? Uh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Palace. Yes, yeah. I want to come to you. I don't think, <laughs> Palace, you're going like, do you want to say anything, Palace? Well, I just, I will say this. Um, it does disturb me to see so much depression and sadness and talk mm. of suicide. I lost my brother to suicide. And I, I, my mission now is to make sure that people understand, everyone I meet understands the value that they have to offer others. And if you cannot see the value that you have to offer, you ask people who know and love you. You ask them yes. to tell them why you're valuable because sometimes mm. we can't see it for ourselves, mm. but it's incredibly important yeah. because the world loses when they lose all of these wonderful people with energy and enthusiasm and ideas and skills and people skills and love um, and, and we all lose. So I, I feel mm. very strongly about that. But I also realize that life is short and things can happen. It can cut our lives short when a pandemic comes by. So my, my motto is life is short, make it pop, make it extraordinary. And that's yes. all that we can do every day is, is find value, share it with others, and then ask others to connect with us, as Kathy said, because it's, it's together that we're going to get through this. So thank you for inviting me and, and including me today. Right. Thank, Thank you so, so much. much. Thank, Thank you, Valis. Okay, so I would, so, I would just yes. like to finish. Yes. Just to really say, what, repeat what I said. Stay with yeah. us. 
we've really enjoyed having you we love the questions that you have put in the um uh, the comments and many of these questions we can't answer them in the short session but they will inform what we do for the rest of the youth summit so the answers will yeah. come uh, yes. over time as well so please stay with us and we love to have you here and thank you for being with us today thank, thank you. you thank you so much john okay so we are almost end of this session and we would like to end here definitely and i'm really sorry dear audience if i couldn't uh, take your questions uh, because you know our time constraints but yes whatever john said we are going to cover everything because summit will be running on uh, till december so please stay with us and keep watching and we are going to sign out from here today right now okay so till that stay home stay home and stay safe we will meet you soon with the next impact session okay bye bye everyone thank you bye bye thank you <laughs> yay thank bye -bye. you so much